evening and welcome to this special edition of ET Now Startup Central. We are of course coming to you uh, from the jury meet of the ET Startup Awards as you can see. Uh, they have decided on the winners but unfortunately we'll have to hold our breath till Wednesday uh, before we disclose the winners to you. But on the sidelines of this very important jury meet, we caught up with some of the biggest names in India Inc. in the Indian startup ecosystem. Remember, uh, the jury included the likes of Sachin Bansal, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, Nandan Alekani, Devjani Ghosh, Rishad Premji. Uh, you also had Manu Jain, Deep Kalra and others. Uh, we caught up with almost all of them on what they were looking for, the overall sense of the startup ecosystem and the key criteria they're going to keep in mind while picking the winners. We start off then with the big interview that we've been teasing for you all evening. It's Sachin Bansal's first appearance anywhere after leaving Flipkart a few weeks back after the mega Flipkart Walmart deal. We caught up with him to understand what's exciting him about Indian startups these days uh, and if we are still more dependent on foreign capital versus domestic capital compared to a China. Let's listen in to what Sachin Bansal had to say in this interview. I've gone through the list of startups uh, that are up for uh, awards this time and uh, it seems like an exciting uh, list of companies. Hmm. What I'm looking for is uh, people who have uh, who are in uh, exciting markets uh, and great teams hmm. uh, and I think that's what I'm looking for where uh, and also uh, some room for innovation. Hmm. Right? It shouldn't be that it should be an existing in industry and people are just doing the same thing that other people are doing. It, it shouldn't be like a me too kind yeah, of Yeah, it should be something new, something uh, tech driven, something hmm. uh, which is using new technologies like AI or blockchain or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and um, yeah, I think, but it seems like an exciting uh, list. Right, in fact, this is the fourth edition. So, uh, you know, as someone who's seen this evolve over four years, uh, what can you say about the current ecosystem? Are we much better off in terms of maturity of startups, quality of startups? Of course, I mean, I think uh, this, I mean, uh, I started by, I mean, our company in 2007, right? And that's what, uh, the, 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 the amount of transformation that has happened in the startup ecosystem the last 10 years is amazing. Right? And, and every year I'm seeing a better quality of entrepreneurs, um, investors, more and more investors uh, jumping in. Uh, even actually now, the big thing now is that even Indian money is now actually flowing into the startup ecosystem as well. So, so we're not that dependent on foreign capital. No, we're still very dependent on foreign <laughs> capital. I don't think, I don't think we should. Uh, uh, right, right now, I think we should still dependent on that. We are not like China right now, where China is completely independent of almost independent of foreign capital, and actually now Chinese companies are investing outside of China now. Right. I think we are far from that. But we are seeing signs that Indian capital is also uh, putting in, uh, uh, is also coming into the startup ecosystem. Right. Uh, Sachin, if you look at the focus that we've seen, you know, uh, it was largely B2C, but are you seeing more diversified models? Because you spoke about AI blockchain, how it's making a difference. We are seeing a lot of SaaS startups emerge from centers such as Chennai, Pune. Yes. So um, are you seeing this go beyond e-commerce, food tech, um, you know, cab aggregators? What dominated the discourse in the first few years? Absolutely. I think even not just that, I mean, they're drone companies uh, as well, right? So uh, it's not, I think it's gone way beyond uh, all of that and um, uh, just uh, e-commerce and transaction based uh, success, although the largest companies... And payments is also taking off. In a yes, I think that, but the largest companies, of course, will be built in transportation, payments, finance. Um, and e-commerce and other things but I think this new sector is also very exciting that is uh, opening up um, I, I, I was very excited to see a lot of uh, social uh, work right. as well I mean right. the company enterprise. social enterprises also uh, or, or technology companies which are enabling uh, social, social uh, good right so that also is I think very exciting Right, you heard out Sachin Bansal there talking about uh, the ecosystem, how, you know, there is reliance on uh, domestic capital vis-a-vis -vis foreign capital, unlike a China, uh, which he said uh, is completely reliant on domestic capital and Chinese companies, in fact, uh, invest in a lot of companies abroad. But moving away from uh, Sachin to another big voice in the startup ecosystem, we're talking about Vijay Shekhar Sharma, the founder of Paytm. Uh, now, he confirmed that Paytm is indeed in talk 
talks with SoftBank to take Paytm to Japan. Now, Japan, remember, has traditionally been a very tough market to crack. Uh, you know, IT companies have been trying to crack Japan for ages. Uh, but right now, it looks like uh, digital payment services from mobile could take off. Let's listen in what Vijay Shekhar Sharma had to say. I saw the list of companies and the best part is that I only knew about 15-20% of them and then I saw the traction they have in terms of user, money or revenue, incredible. So the best part about ET Startup Award is that it has incredibly great companies segmented in totally diverse number of segments and may may not have got so much of talked about. So I'm so impressed by ET selection and I so look forward to know more about those startups. Right, we look forward to the winners as well but it's been ages since we've had you so I don't know where to start. Maybe I should start with how the ecosystem has dramatically changed in the last couple of months. Uh, you know this is the first time I think you're talking after the Flipkart Walmart deal. So what has that meant for a Paytm considering you're also building out Paytm Mall in a big way. I think uh, uh, I remember January 2015 is a time when I was supposed to see Masa in a board meeting of ours and then he was there in Hong Kong and I had built three major ecosystems in the country and two extra ecosystems and I said uh, three majors were obviously Paytm, Flipkart and Amazon led ecosystems and two others were Google and Facebook. And I had predicted that they would come into commerce and payments, even though they don't show up today, they are more or less on those days, right. 2015 I'm talking about. And if you see the landscape, it nearly has come into that ecosystem statement. So I'd say that, uh, first of all, I feel uh, truly privileged and lucky that we are in one of those lists mm. where the <laughs> ecosystem list can be accounted for. And the landscape has definitely changed. The real serious resources have got committed in every side. Nobody can say I have more money than less mm. others. And uh, nobody should be uh, saying I have one advantage over other or other has one advantage over me. So I think it's a significantly interesting game of the five players that are there in this. Inevitably, there will be more or less Two or three. Is there going to be more consolidation? Will we see a Paytm combining with one of the two players? Um, we, we, we are, by the way, we are an end play play. <laughs> I, can, I can say this on the day when I was 2001 started. Hmm. I kept getting uh, acquisition offers or other things, hmm. but I can say that I'm playing for, for good. I mean, this is not even a choice because as an entrepreneur, there is nothing else better than b but to build something out of India. And I wish that we become one of those champions that India can also build something world class, something world scale, something huge and then can go to other countries. So right. I read something interesting this morning about how you're collaborating with SoftBank to enter Japan. Um, t tell us a bit about that and is this the first of many international forays that we are going to see for people? Uh, we did Canada. You did Canada. Uh, yes, and you we have a consumer, we have yeah. a consumer mm -hmm. business in Canada and mm -hmm. we are learning there and obviously uh, Masa exists with a <laughs> massive force in Japan, so an opportunity to work with him is going to be incredible. Uh, let's see what comes out of Japan. Right. And uh, it, It's also been a very difficult market to, tra to crack. I mean, if you look at IT companies, the potential has always been huge because they're huge consumer consumers of tech, but they've also been sort of very careful, a very conservative market. Yeah. I think uh, one thing I learned about Japan is that they don't like uh, foreign-built technology, mm. so they, it has to be significantly bottom-up built, mm. and that is what the challenge or opportunity would be. So, uh, really speaking, Paytm's opportunity is primarily India. 5% mm. or 10% is what we'll delve into, and uh, more or less developed economies. I'm not for Indonesia or Africa. Right. Lastly, before I let you go, everybody is talking about UPI 2.0. Is that going to be a game changer? Considering you know they are still not decided on e mandates and. WhatsApp's payment plans also are not very clear at this point. Uh, what do you make of the big shift that's going to happen? A uh, very honest comment. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what you <laughs> to find out. I, I, I remember there was a discussion mm -hmm. happening in an internal uh, conversation that uh, I, we were expecting some automatic deduction. Right, is that right. what mandate the, the is? Automatic debit. But that is not coming. Yeah. So then it is not coming. Okay. I don't know what is com what else is coming. So as far as you, I don't know 1.0 or 2.0 gap. <laughs> I just know that UPI has given us hmm. um, sort of a equal playing ground because one point of time we were not even allowed to play UPI. That's right. It was so bad. That's right. That's At least right. today we can say that we are a player. And I think we can comfortably say that we are not a player, but we are a key player in and that ecosystem. And are you uh, uh, satisfied with the playing field that you have vis-a-vis -a, -vis a WhatsApp or a Google Taze? Or 
is there something that needs to be done there in terms of equity between Indian players and foreign players? Uh, I, I, look, if you look at it as a player versus domicile, I don't think UPI discriminates over one right. domicile over other. Right. So first of all, we should not say there is anything one over other. But definitely, I mean, depending on scale and influence, you can get what extra incentives right. or right. what extra, I'd say, uh, uh, freedoms or sort of let's say things that are only you are let they let you do you, you only you can do and others can't do those kind of things I don't know what to say every player has their own pro and cons and every player in the industry attempts to go and negotiate so it's actually like a insurance business insurance is a matter of solicitation right. UPI seems like one of those matters you heard our two big voices there, Sachin Bansal, his first media appearance after exiting Flipkart and of course Vijay Shikhar Sharma of Paytm talking about the big foray into Japan. But time to bring in another special guest on Startup Central. We have Archana Rai, editor of the Economic Times, uh, who was in that uh, you know meeting uh, where the high-powered jury decided on the winners. We of course have to wait till Wednesday till the winners are announced. But um, Archana, you know, this is the fourth edition. Take us through the process. How is it different this time? A lot of jury members we spoke to kept stressing on the diversity um, of uh, startups. So can you uh, take us through what went into the process? So in, in a sense, I feel we've got on to uh, doing it in a manner that seems to grow better every year. That's really what uh, came out to us from the reaction of the jury who were um, who pointed out the fact that every year in succession, the ET Startup Award seems to throw up completely new names which they haven't heard of before. And the reason I'm saying this is because in um, the entire pool of uh, nominations for the Startup Awards comes from the industry. Right. So we ask India's top 50 or uh, a little over 50 of entrepreneurs and investors to give us their list of nominations for all eight categories. Mm -hmm. And from that pool, the rankings and the final decision of the shortlist is made. So in a sense, uh, this is by industry and chosen by a high part jury that is also made up of top entrepreneurs and investors. So for us, it is validation when they then tell us that there are names here they've never heard of before. So it means the system is working. And that is our big takeaway, really, from you know, this year's uh, meeting. That said, uh, there was also, of course, very spirited discussion around right. all the categories. In fact, I was just coming to that. You know, usually we notice that um, the, the Midas Touch and Startup of the Year perhaps takes the longest to decide on. True, they uh, do. Was that the case this time as well? Yes, they, in fact, uh, they sort of, I think, uh, because um, now in the fourth year, we have people who have been on the jury earlier. Right. So they do have a sense of which categories require more discussion also. So to that extent, I think they allocated time according and said they would spend more time discussing the two heavyweight categories, as they said, Midas and the Startup mm -hmm. of the Year. But um, it was very interesting that what they called out and pointed out was the quality of the lists or the short list or the contenders in categories like social enterprise, for instance, right, right. which really came up for a lot of uh, appreciation from their part and also discussion, and um, categories such as Best on Campus, Women Ahead, Mm. was much appreciated as well. So there was a fair bit of discussion through all through the uh, six categories that came, you know, uh, in the at the start of the meeting itself. So um, but what really stood out was that uh, there was unanimity of opinion finally. Right. So it was a very smooth in that sense, spirited discussion, but smooth ending. Right, right. Uh, finally, Ashna, before I let you go, you know, um, one recurring theme that we've seen in the last year um, has been about the Bharat market going beyond the 100 million, 150 million, uh, solving problems for India, you know, uh, very India specific solutions. Uh, was that a, a defining criteria when the jury went? through the list of, uh, you know, went through the winners and the nominees. Did that play on the jury's mind? No, I wouldn't say it did in particular, although it, in cases where there were instances for mm. of startups that mm. uh, address the India market and address these problems in categories, for instance, like social enterprise, for instance, right. they, were co they were commended, they were much commended, but mm. that was not a um, uh, criterion that was a decision maker across category. That would not be correct to say that. And um, 
while it did uh, come in for praise when there were instances of startups that did work of that nature, it was not a defining so factor. So the focus was on scale, execution, the profitability? The focus very much. It was on scale. It was on the quality of the team. It was um, entrepreneurial talent right. and ability to think big. Vision right. is what they went for. Right. The, the most difficult thing is knowing something and you cannot disclose it for the next couple of days. So you will have to wait till Wednesday to really know about the winners. But thank you for joining us on Startup Center. But don't go anywhere. We're taking a short break at this point. But after the break, we tell you about a big uh, rise with India story. Indian origin entrepreneur Bharat Desai has sold Sintel today to France's Atos for $3.4 billion. More details on that on the other side of this break. Right, after all the action on ET Startup Awards, time to bring you another very important deal that concluded today. Uh, Francis Atos has reached a deal to buy out US listed Sintel for $3.4 billion. In case you're wondering why this is interesting, because this was founded by an Indian origin entrepreneur, Bharat Desai. It is one of India's oldest ID companies, I think founded in 1980. Uh, and he stands to make a lot from this deal. It's also going to have an India impact because the majority of Sintel's employees are in India. Rahul joins us to take us through uh, the details. Rahul, take it away. Uh, Chandra, that's right. It's also a big deal because remember, it's an excellent rise with India's story because $3.4 billion and it is an all cash deal. Interestingly, as you pointed out, uh, uh, it is really, it was started by an Indian origin entrepreneur, Bharat Desai. As you pointed out, India is a very significant uh, uh, of importance here because of the 23,000 employees that they have in various countries, about 18,000 of them, so uh, uh, more than 70% of their employees employee base is based out of India. Uh, so uh, it'd be interesting to see how this uh, acquisition really plays out in the months to come. Because remember, uh, the, uh, the other big deal that really happened, uh, uh, you know, we saw French company Capgemini really acquire iGate that had significant number of employees here in India. So uh, with this acquisition also, India will be an interesting place to watch out. For now, all the entire management will really join uh, ATOS as part of uh, uh, the acquisition. Uh, and Bharat Desai has has been on the Forbes billionaire list quite some times and with the cash out deal that he's had uh, it really makes him a lot more richer in that sense uh, but an excellent exit for the company too. Right. Thanks for that, uh, Rahul. And it's going to be interesting because, you know, will this mean more exits for mid-caps in India, such as Mindtree, Hexaware? At what valuations are those going to happen? We'll have to see those stories. But uh, looks like we have an entrepreneur who's exited uh, uh, with a significant sum. And it remains to be seen how Bharat Desai is going to redeploy that money. Will it make its way to philanthropy or startups? That's something we will know. But on that note, thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of ET Now Startup Central. Stay tuned to the channel for more news and updates.